Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the third part in my rebuilding and resoling a pair of Florsheim Royal Imperial 96624s at home. This is the final part. If you didn't see the first two parts, go to the description of this video, go and watch those first. All right, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Look at that. And here they are, all finished up. So here's what the shoes look like when I found them. I thrifted them for $8. They've been resold before, as you can see here, and they're pretty rough, but the uppers themselves were in good condition, and that's really what I was concerned with. This is a starting point. And where we left off at the last video, I had just finished up uh, sanding and shining the edges of the heels. So here's one more look at them. Now the next few steps here are to recreate that V cleat heel top lift. I'm going to increase the spacing just a little bit. I'm not going to go exactly the same. The wire nails that I'm going to use um, have round heads on them instead of the rectangular heads that the factory nails had. I don't have the factory nails. Believe it or not, I spent two hours last night trying to find something brass or steel, a uh, rectangular shape. I looked through McMaster Car. I looked online. I looked through, um, you know, obviously Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that, but as well as even online suppliers of metal and I'm just going to use this.
All right, here goes a moment of truth. I didn't want to pound it in all the way, test fit it all the way before I glued it because it's a little bit of a press fit. I didn't think it's going to come out. shave a little bit off the bottom of it. Oh, that was difficult. that off and repolish that edge. Now this is kind of interesting stuff. I've got a whole other video on it. Uh, pure polish, cleaner conditioner, number one, all natural. The ingredients are listed right here. Uh, orange oil, beeswax, coconut oil. So like the kiwi polish that I use is petroleum solvent's not good for you. Um, number two, um, the, the research that the owner, Andy Vaughn, did on this I think is great uh, because part of the reason he uses coconut oil is because of the longevity of it. Um, you know, things like that. The oil not going rancid and keeping your leather in good condition. This is a thicker cloth that I got from, actually from Andy as well, Pure Polish. I'll put the website link. When you use something thicker like this, it um, this is cleaner and conditioner. So what I'm doing by using a thicker cloth is I'm giving it some conditioning, but I'm also pulling some of the dirt and things off the surface since this is old leather. I want to condition it and clean it simultaneously, if that makes sense. So, it's got a great scent. It's nutrients back in the leather. I think it's awesome stuff.
for the mirror shown. It was Andy himself, the owner of Pure Polish, says in my Leather Talk video interview, he says that this product is not necessarily um, a good beginner's product. Like, see, when I touch it right now, I know you can't feel on screen, but it feels dry. It feels hard. So if I place my finger on it for a second and let the heat soak in, now when I touch it, it feels slippery. So what's happening is that coconut oil, I think, in it uh, is basically melting. But you got to give it a second. So, in other words, because it's all natural ingredients, it's not as temperature stable as some of the other polishes. So that's why it's not great for beginners. But I think it works awesome. Every bit as good as Sapphire Mirror Gloss. It's much less expensive, much less expensive for adults than Sapphire Mirror Gloss. And it's made in the US. So I'm gonna load this toe up with several coats all at once. You saw me take it back on the long on the wing there a little bit, but just just that one coat. I'm not going to mirror shine the areas that flex, because it'll crack. That's good. I'll let that set up. And here they are all finished up. First, let me tell you a little bit about the shoe. This shoe couldn't get you into the country club, you know, where a black cap toe Oxford is required. Its heel is like the fender flares Carol Shelby and AC Cobra put on the big block Cobras. It's one of its most attractive features and it doesn't apologize for it. The beauty of this shoe is in its sheer brute. 
I felt that the natural colored welt and sole edges and heel just highlighted that. Now, some people may say that black and brown or black and tan especially don't go together, but there are no hard and fast rules in fashion. And when something becomes a consensus, it does become accepted. And I think this is definitely one of those styles of shoe that has definitely become accepted. Recently, you'll see, I mean, for example, Cobbler G just did a, a shoe just like this, as so did Steve uh, from Beto's Leatherworks. I was inspired by both of them. I believe this style of shoe is English. The English, I believe, would have called this a country shoe. They would call it a derby, where in the U.S. we call it a derby. The moniker Long Wing Blucher, uh, it's long wing because the wingtips go all the way to the back of the shoe, and the blucher is a specific style of derby where the open flaps are sewn on top of the shoe. So this is commonly known as a long wing blucher, and it's a very uh, American and English style of shoe. The heel is chunky. The heel is broad. The heel is wide. You'll usually see the most elegant and expensive shoes have very narrow heels which are, that are 270 degree Goodyear welted so that the heel is very slim. The heel fits very tight to the back of the, the heel cup of the upper, and then it's often pitched to make the part that contacts the ground even more narrow. This shoe will have none of that. This shoe makes no apologize for its utilitarian low technology approach. It has six full pieces of leather between the bottom of your foot and the ground on which you walk. It will protect you from probably almost anything except that which is specifically designed to hurt you. It makes no apologies. It doesn't try to fit in. Now, you'll notice some things about this shoe as well. For example, the five nails on the bottom of the arch of the soles from one shoe to the other is not perfectly even. Well, let me tell you, those nails were placed exactly where they were on the original Florsheim shoes. So they weren't in the exact uh, symmetrical location from the factory. Um, I don't show it here, but the original heel blocks from Florsheim, there's about a 3 16th inch difference between the length of both of them. You'll see the back of the heel there. You know, some of the finishing area isn't perfect. When I put in those V-cleats, it did separate the heel from the base a little bit, and I had to glue it back down, and you can kind of see that. Um, you can see a couple of the spots there where the, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a gap there between the sole and the midsole. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy. There's a spot uh, where some of the stitching, a few spots where some of the stitching is not perfectly in line. Uh, but for my level of craftsmanship abilities, this is by far the best job I've done uh, and, and something that I'm definitely, definitely proud of and happy of. Florsheim made this kind of shoe from the 1950s all the way through today. And there's a reason that this shoe style has not gone away. And there's a reason people still love it today. Alan Edmonds makes a very similar shoe in the McNeil that they just recently stopped producing. So uh, here a little bit later, we see some of the before and afters. You can see a little more of the detailing of the uh, mirror shine. Now, granted, remember, this is pebble grain. It's textured leather. You can see a little bit more of the stitch quality on the welt. And I've also intermingled here towards the end some before and after shots. So you can get a little better appreciation of uh, where these things really came from. Um, it took me, you know, a, a few evenings here and there over a period of about a month and a half to do these. Just picking away at them at the evenings and things like that. Um, so I'm glad that you guys came with me on this journey and I hope that you did enjoy this and it brought you some value. If you guys want to see more of these kind of before and afters, go to my page and then go to playlists and then you can click on before and after. And I've got a lot more things like this. All right. Thank you very much. I'll roll some music here and let you guys enjoy some closing, closing shots. God bless you.